You want me to show you how to cook crispy skin fish? Okay, I can do that, but I will not only show you one way, I show you four ways. Each version unique and for totally different purposes. Now, crispy golden skin of fish is such a glorious thing. It's not just on fish to think about pork, crackling, crispy skin duck, roast chicken, oh, I'm getting hungry. But with fish, it's obviously the most challenging because how can you crisp the skin perfectly and accomplish that without overcooking the juicy fish on the other side? Well, that's why I come in. I manage some of the best kitchens around the world and I won endless awards. Today I run a cooking school. First, the most common way of cooking thick fresh fish with a crispy skin. Then I'll show you how to do that with a very thin fish fillet so that he, that's so easily to overcook. But hey, not on my watch as I will give you an amazing trick. Then we're gonna make fish skin wavers, you know, which you can serve with sous vide cooked fish. And then finally, make the scale really crunchy and crispy. But first, a few basic. Now, tail pieces do not work for crispy skin fish fish. Now fish lives in a very dense environment. Unlike land animals, fish only have two muscles. No one is that one you see here, the other one is underneath the skin. But if you want to learn more about that, check out my online courses where you learn everything. So the tail piece is where all those tendons, where all those muscles get come together. Because the fish, when it swims, it literally just uses a tail, so that's where you have the most muscles. So when you then cook that tail piece, it often contracts much more and it puckles up. Hence the tail pieces are not good for crispy skin fish unless you use the method number three in this video. The fish skin is literally full of collagen and behaves very different to the muscle. It's like a woven mesh of collagen fibers which are orientated in a particular direction. Yeah? This makes the skin in a raw state so elastic and then during cooking the skin contracts in that direction. The collagen essentially is gelatin. Once you dry it out, the collagen becomes brittle and hard like a gelatin sheet. Can you see that? To achieve this, to get it from wet gelatin like you see here, to dry gelatin or a crispy skin, you need to obviously dry it out. Easy. Well, yes and no. Remember there's a fish fillet sticking on the other side of the skin and that needs a lot of attention so it does not overcook or get damaged. So, because you need to think fish is already cooked at 55 degrees, so it doesn't need much heat. One tip before we start, fish fillets with scales on work very diff different. So, but in number four of this video, you, you're gonna see that all. Oh, it's gonna be so good. I'll tell you that, you will love it. I'm so excited showing you all this. So let's start first with the thick fish fillets. The easiest one. And I do it today with salmon because that's what most of you use. But any fish works with this method. I take a fish fillet and then you drag the blade straight over it like you see I do here. But do it gently so you don't just damage the meat. This way you drag out any excess water from the skin and remove any possible scales from the skin. Remember fish with scales does not turn that crispy it's not that gives you that snappy crunch that you want. So if it's scaled properly, you can just place it on a piece of kitchen paper while you heat the pan. I know what you want to ask. I know it already. Do I bring the fish to room temperature before cooking? No. There's actually no real science that proves that. Have it fridge cold. Cold fish takes longer to cook, so more time to get the skin really crispy. I also ask, should I score the skin? No, no, don't do that again. Sorry for telling off so many times but if you score the skin the heat can penetrate easier and overcook the fish much quicker. So then heat your pan up on a very high heat, then you lower the temperature to a medium hot heat. Yeah? So I know you're going to ask me now, why does it not use a non-stick pan? Well, I'll tell you what, those things are super, super toxic and they're actually not needed. I'll tell you a quick little story how it works when you do it properly. If you take a pan and you place it under a microscope, like that stainless steel or cast iron pan, if you, you would see thousands and thousands and thousands of little cracks. Literally 
actually looks like the Grand Canyon from above. When I heat it, metal obviously expands and most of the cracks, almost all the cracks will close up. Now glue apparently is made from protein, yeah? And the stickier the glue as more proteins it contains. I mean, that's what I was told. I, I could be wrong, but hey, you know, I don't take the blame because somebody else told me that. So, if I place the skin into a cold pan, the, the juices, of course, of that pan of the chicken or that meat will go into those cracks and finger the whole thing sticks. And that's why you choose your spot. And then you let the skin dry out and then it renders out all the juices, it renders out all the fat. And, and that's important to not to move the fish for at least for two or three or five minutes, depending on how thick it is. The skin needs to dry out and if it's dry, it cannot stick. Easy, isn't it? A little cooking fat and then you choose your spot where you're going to place your fillet for the next few minutes and in it goes and immediately the collagen fibers will contract, the pores will close up. Do not press that fish down. If you press your fish down, it will disconnect the fish from its skin. Further, the meat fibers will break as the heat comes in. The fish is a very, very fragile protein. You know, you press it down, you end up with mushy fish. The fish, my skin might be perfect at the end, but the fish fillet will have lost all its unique texture. And you don't touch your fish, so it's actually time for a glass of wine. Cheers. And then you cook it for five or six minutes. If it's smaller fish fillet, probably three or four minutes. And, and when you see that fish fillet comes easy off, it's ready. Again, it's all depending on thickness, yeah? So approximately, you can see it on the side how far it's cooked. It's approximately half the cooking time than is resting time, but you need to know your pan. If it's a cast iron pan like I have here, then obviously would, or it's copper, then I probably would slide the fish slice underneath the fish fillet so that the residual heat from the pan can cook the fish because fish is already fully cooked at around 50 to 55 degrees Celsius or 122 to 131 degrees Fahrenheit. If you want to cook it more, don't cook it more. You know, if I say I want a medium well or well done, just let it sit longer in a pan. It will eventually be all cooked through just by sitting in a pan. The heat will always travel inwards. Yeah? It will gently cook the fish and it will be well done, but it will not be dry and sort of boring because the pro you haven't denatured the proteins on those lower temperatures. Do you get that? Mm. Oh, that's so runny. Skin perfect crispy. Fish perfect juicy. Oh, just. F fish cooking can make you very merry. <laughs> Next, sin fish fillet. You know, you buy your sea bass, your, your sole or your red mullet, whiting, and it costs you a small fortune. And then you take it home and you cook it like the recipe says, and it ends up being dry, mushy, boring. Has that ever happened to you? It did to me many times, and I know it happens to a lot of my students. And I came up with that method. You see, in that case, it's obviously a smaller fish fillet. I can leave the tail pieces on. And they're probably most likely not going to pack it because it's connected to the fish fillet. Yeah? And, then I, and the little trick I'm going to show you now. The skin on such fish is obviously much thinner, so it will need a shorter cooking time. What I'm going to do with that fish fillet is now that I put it on a plate and then I place it into the freezer for 20 to 30 minutes, skin side up. Basically, I get the fish fillet as cold as I possibly can till some of the edges harden and then I heat the pan and then I place it skin side down in the pan on a high heat this time all the way through and cook it probably for two to two and a half to three minutes on the skin side only because the meat is being ice cold. I probably have an extra advantage of another 30 seconds or up to a minute and that's a long time to work on your skin and get it super crispy without overcooking the fish. Just flip it over and leave it in the pan for one or two seconds and serve it straight away. And you need to put it on a pre-warm plate. Done. Easy. See how juicy it is? That's such a good trick, isn't it? Perfect for thin fish fillets. Oh, it didn't taste so good. Have some more wine. I hope I'll be able to show you more. 
why not go better in my head, but... Oh. Imagine you make a fish confit, you know, where you sort of do the type of sous vide fish. I know it's getting very chefy now, so I should have another drink. I should have liked their drink. And you want to serve it with crispy skin, you know, crispy skin fish for sous vide fish. You, you know, you want to really impress, like a Michelin star chef in your own kitchen. So you take the skin off the fish like I do here. You basically grab the tail and place your knife on a sort of a 30 to 39 degree angle. And then you just pull that off. You see how that works? And that's not even a cutting motion, that's just a pulling motion, isn't it? Voila. Done. Easy. Cheers. <laughs> Next you scrape away all the grey muscle from underneath, you know, all the fat from inside the skin. Then you, if there are any scales on it, you get rid of them as well. Then you brush it with olive oil or oil and then you put it onto a tray. And it basically will now become as hard as that gelatin in the oven, yeah? So that's why the oil and the salt which you put on is very important too. Because if you don't do that, it becomes too dry just like that gelatin. Then you heat the oven to 150 to 160 degrees Celsius and then cover it with baking paper and then put it in the oven and put a weight on it. Cook it in a preheated oven for approximately 45 minutes or so. You can leave it a bit longer. Approximately 80% of the skin is actually water and has lots of collagen fiber, so it will be like the fiberglass. Hence, it takes a while to dry it out. Once it's ready, remove it, remove the weight, store it in an airtight container for up to 10 days in your fridge. We you can even freeze it. I cooked my fish confit here. Just put it in the oven, you know, on the lowest temperature. I left it in there 45 minutes. But hey, I'll show you that in another video. And here we go. Doesn't it look great? And I just can decorate it so nicely. So nicely with that crispy skin fish. You know. Crispy skin fish, like a Michelin star chef. It's surprising easy, but a bit messy. But is it worth it? Yeah, yeah. You're gonna blow your guests' mind and they will never work out how could you achieve that. You, you can do that with a whole fish too, but I want to show you that with a thin fillet because the fillet will be absolutely perfect for dinner party. So first you gently loosen the scales into the opposite direction. Don't detach them, just loosen them a little bit so that the oil can go in. Place the fish on a rack, you know, push a bamboo skewer through the fillet, tie it up, then heat some cooking oil for to approximately approximately 200 degrees, uh, place the rack on a sort of a 60 degree angle over the oil and then carefully and gently pour the oil against the direction of the scales. Do that till the fish scales are completely dry. This will also cook you the fish of course. Great isn't it? It's easy. But when you know everything is easy. And if you want to know more, then check out my video about summer palatine and to experience fish on a totally new level, yeah? So thank you. I hope you have a great day. And I look forward to cooking with you in one of my other videos. And I will have, have, have another little drinky here. Yeah. Oh shit, I'm blasted, I think. I think I had too much. You should have told me not to drink so much. But it's, it's bloody good wine. What is this? Re Riesling. It's good, isn't it? <laughs> I think I have another bottle in the fridge. Thank you and have a great day.